up, LHS? I'm Matthew. I'm Pranav. Seniors need to check their school email for a link to retake senior pictures, submit baby pictures and quotes, and to order senior ads. All of these things must be completed by September 27th. The PSAT will be on October 16th. The cost is $16, and it is open to all sophomores and juniors. The deadline to sign up is Friday, September 13th. If you register for the exam, you will be required to pay for it, even if you do not take it, so sign up in guidance. Yearbooks are on sale, and we're having a back-to-school special. Yearbooks are $65 if purchased by September 30th. Students who did not pick up their IDs need to come by A303 between classes to pick that up. This year, LHS Host is promoting Team Gracie at Sherry's Run. If you go to sherrysrun.org, you can register to run or walk for Team Gracie. Here's McKenzie with more info. Hey, LHS, big announcement, so listen up. Gracelyn Davis is the three-year-old daughter of Lebanon's alumni student, Lindsay Davis. Gracie was sadly diagnosed with two different types of leukemia in 2018, and she is currently going through chemotherapy. LHS Hosa is trying to give Gracie the largest team at Sherry's Run this year. Sherry's Run is this Saturday at 8 a.m. at Wilson Bank & Trust. This year, Hosa is promoting Team Gracie, so if you want to register, go to www.sherrysrun.org and you can register to run or walk for Team Gracie. Also, if you do register and you want the Team Gracie t-shirt, bring $10 to Miss Ward in room C306. If you can't participate in Sherry's Run, but you still want to support Gracie by purchasing a t-shirt, bring $20 to Miss Ward in room C306. Remember, go to sherrysrun.org so you can register to run, walk, or donate to Team Gracie. Parent-teacher conferences will be held tomorrow from 3.30 to 6.30. Our teachers love to spend time with your parents. This is a great time for them to brag about how well you're doing in class. Freshmen, there will be a seminar tomorrow in the auditorium at 1.35. The ACT will be given this Saturday from 8 to 12. Here are some helpful tips to help you prepare for the test. Hello and welcome to Hear Tutoring. In this video, we're going to talk about when and how to use the answer choices for the ACT math test. First, let's just make sure we say that we are allowed to use the answer choices. The ACT math test is not like a normal math test, where we need to start from the beginning and work to the end, showing all of our work. In fact, we shouldn't do that because our goal isn't to show anyone that we know how to do the question. Rather, our goal for the ACT math test is simply to get the right answer as quickly as possible, using whatever method necessary. Sometimes, the best method to get the right answer is to just use the answer choices and plug them back into the question, even if we know how to do the questions the right way. This is because sometimes the right way to do the question will actually take a lot longer than just using the answer choice. Now, let's talk about how and when to use the answer choices. Regarding the how, the most efficient way to use the answer choices is to start with C, since it will always be the choice that's right in the middle. If C ends up being wrong, then we only need to pick one more choice to find the right answer. If C ends up being too big, then we know the answer needs to be either A or B, then we just need to pick either A or B to plug in. If it's right, then great. If it's wrong, then we know the answer is the other one. Likewise, if C ends up being too small, then we know the answer will be either D or E, so we pick one of them to plug in. If it's right, great. If it's wrong, then we know the answer is the other one. On the other hand, if we just started with choice A and worked forwards, we might need to try four different choices if the answer is E, instead of just two using this method where we start with C. Now, let's try this with two examples. First, let's take a look at this question. If 2n plus 1 squared minus n minus 5 squared equals 16, then what could be a value of n? Our choices are 1, 2, 4, 5, and 6. For this question, we should recognize that it would take quite a while to foil out the entire problem and find the roots, so this will be a perfect question to use the answer choices for. So let's start by trying choice C, which is 4. When we plug 4 in, we end up getting 9 squared minus negative 1 squared equals 16, which simplifies to 81 minus 1 equals 16, which is 80 equals 16, which doesn't work. We say that 80 is too big, so let's try one of the smaller choices. Let's try A by plugging 1 back into the original equation. When we do this, we end up getting 3 squared minus negative 4 squared equals 16, which simplifies to 9 minus 16 equals 16, which simplifies to negative 7 equals 16, which doesn't work either. So now we know the answer needs to be between A and C, or between 1 and 4, so we can just pick B at this point and move on. But if we wanted to check this, we would see that plugging 2 back into the equation gets us 5 squared minus negative 3 squared equals 16, which simplifies to 25, minus 9 equals 16, which simplifies to 16 equals 16. With this method of using the answers, we will only need to try at most two of the answer choices. 
Whereas if we started from the beginning, we might need to try up to four choices. Now, if we wanted to actually set this question up and solve it, we would have had to distribute or FOIL out everything, combine all the like terms, get everything to one side so they equal zero, and then find the roots. Probably using the quadratic formula, which would have taken a lot longer. Using the answer choices was a much better option for this question. Now, let's try one more example together. Let's take a look at this question. In a bag of marbles, one-third of the marbles are red, one-fourth of the marbles are blue, one-sixth of the marbles are green, and 21 marbles are yellow. How many total marbles are in the bag? Our choices are 48, 60, 72, 84, and 96. Like with the last question, we can figure out pretty quickly that this question will take a while to set up and solve, and that using the answer choices will probably be quicker and easier. So here's how we could use the answer choices. Let's start with C, which is 72. If there are 72 marbles in the bag, then one-third, or 24, are red, one-fourth, or 18 are blue, one-sixth, or 12 are green, and 21 are yellow. This adds up to 75 marbles, which is higher than 72, so we know that 72 is too small, which means we should try D or E for our next answer choice to use. Let's try D, or 84. If there are 84 total marbles in the bag, then one-third or 28 are red, one-fourth or 21 are blue, one-sixth or 14 are green, and 21 are yellow. This adds up to 84, which is what we were aiming for, so our answer is D. As you can see, if we had started from A and moved forward, we would have needed to try three answer choices instead of just two. If we had wanted to set up and solve an equation for this question, we would have done one-third x plus one-fourth x plus one-sixth x plus 21 equals x, then we would have changed the fractions to common denominators to get 4 over 12x plus 3 over 12x plus 2 over 12x plus 21 equals x. Then we would have combined the like terms to get 9 over 12x plus 21 equals x, which simplifies to 3 over 4x plus 21 equals x. Then we subtract 3 over 4x from both sides to get 21 equals 1 over 4x. And finally, we multiply both sides by 4 to get x equals 84, which is our answer, but that took a lot longer than just using the answer choices. So, the two examples that we just went through help give us an idea of what kinds of questions would be good candidates for using the answer choices. Remember, you will need your ID, two number two pencils, and an approved calculator for the test. There will be an interest meeting for those who are not already in Beta Club on Wednesday, September 11th in room B210, directly after school. Beta members do service projects to help those in our community. Japanese Club will meet every first and third Thursday of the month from 3 to 4 in room B317. Please email Ms. Moore if you have any questions. FCA will meet this Thursday at 725 in the auditorium. Student Council will have a meeting on Thursday afternoon in the library right after school. We will, do, we will be discussing homecoming floods, dress up days, and more. FBLA will meet this Wednesday, September 11th in the bank right after school. If you have any questions or cannot attend, please see Ms. Davis. It's not too late to join. The Blue Devil Broadcasting Club will have their first meeting this Thursday right after school in B322. So if you're interested in broadcasting, filming, editing video, or creating short films, come on by and see what they're all about. The library will have a weekly feature called BDN Book Bits. The videos that are shown will provide you with little information of what the book is about. All of the books that are shown in the feature can be checked out in the library. This week's Book Bits is Brain on Fire. My name is Susanna Cahalan. I'm 21 years old, and here I am with my dream job at the New York Post. Gross. Why are you smiling this early in the morning? It's unnatural and disgusting. You look ridiculous. Susanna! You're gonna interview that creepy senator. You'll have a Thursday night. I know I will, because I can always count on you. I had my whole life in front of me. Happy birthday! And I had absolutely no idea what was waiting for me. Very, very late. You gotta get your ass in here. You're gonna miss the 10 o'clock meeting. I feel really sick, you know. My head hurts. My stomach hurts. And my, my hands numb. And I've never felt this before. We've tested Susanna for every infectious disease. All of the results are negative. We're gonna get to the bottom of this together. Her EEG is completely normal. Her MRI is normal. Her neurological exam is normal. It's all normal. Her condition continues to regress. Manic behavior, paranoia. Each of them is giving us a different diagnosis. One is saying bipolar, the next one is saying schizophrenic, and then they're saying psychotic. We should look at hospitals that are better equipped to deal with her. Just take the pills. She needs all of us. We will find the answer. Her life is in your hands. Tell me what is wrong with my daughter. You must be the famous Susanna. I'm scared. I know she's still in there. She's just trapped. I 
promise you. I'm going to do everything I can to find you. No, no, God, no. Time is of the essence. We are losing time. If you would like to check out a book from our library, you're allowed up to five books at a time and keep them up for two weeks. For more information, visit the library. The Video Game Club will also have their first meeting today and the library at 3 o'clock. Meetings will be held weekly. Please see Mr. Holmes if you have any questions. College Fair is quickly approaching, and it is on September 20th at Cumberland University during first and second block. Seniors, permission slips are in guidance, and in order to attend, you must return the form back by Friday. Art Club will have their meeting today at 3 p.m. Please drop off fundraiser donations of individually wrapped candy to Ms. Upshur in room A102 as soon as possible. All money raised will go towards purchasing the art supplies for the club this year. Last Friday, our Blue Devils played a great game against Mount Julia. Throughout the week, BDN will have highlights of the pep rally and game. Today, we are featuring our award-winning Lebanon High School Band. The Blue Devil Cross Country team competed Saturday morning in a three-mile race at the Coleman Midget Meet in Hendersonville. There were 200 athletes in the boys' race and an over 150 girls' race. Judah Bender placed 56 out of 200 with a time of 18 minutes and 54 seconds, and India Maston placed 20th out of 153 with a time of 21 minutes and 40 seconds. The next meet is Saturday in Dixon at Buckner City Park. LHS swim team is having a preseason meeting this Wednesday, September 11th at 6.30 at the Jimmy F Floyd Center. The meeting is for students interested in joining the 2019-2020 team. Well, that's all the news we have today, LHS. I'm Pranav. And I'm Matthew. And this, this has been, been news to you from the, the White and Blue. Blue.